Hello everyone, uh, this is lesson 5, maybe, of Intermediate Java, and today we're going to be talking about, let's do, you know what, let's do runnable classes. Um, this is something that I probably should have covered in intro, but I think I'll toss it in Intermediate because it just makes sense to kind of put it here. Um, if I do go back and add it later in intro, sorry, they, these are going to kind of mesh together because I'm making them at the same time. And intro is just getting to the point where it's about to join up with intermediate, so you guys might have to suffer through a couple that are kind of boring, and this will be one of them. So, first things first, let's talk about what a runnable class is. Uh, a runnable class has a area called run that needs to be implemented. Uh, so pretty pretty boring, pretty basic stuff. Um, let me show you an example of what I'm talking about. I'm gonna create a new class real quick and we'll just call this my object. Um, actually, you know what? Let's let's go with the car theory that I sort of uh, that I sort of went with last time. Oh crap. Okay, uh, it should be in there. Um, okay, and yeah, that's fine. And kill that, open this, and all right, now we're good. So what we're going to do here is we're going to type in implements runnable, and see how it throws, um, where is it? There it is uppercase runnable, by the way. Um, so as you can see, it immediately throws an error um, that says, you have to have an abstract method called runnable.run. And so what does that mean? Well, first things first, it means that we have to make a method. Um, an abstract method simply means that uh, all the children of this object are forced to inherit that method. Um, I'm actually going to be doing a tutorial on abstract classes in the future, so don't worry too much about abstract methods yet. Just know that if you put a method inside of an object, everything inherits from it, so it's great. So, first things first, let's do um, public car, and I want to just make that a, a boring constructor and we'll say well I have to make some stuff up about a car first don't I uh, private wheel wheels uh, private yeah private wheels private int wheels and private int windows so here's what we're gonna do we're going to say um, public car is just going to do this dot run so I'll get to what this means in just a second um, and now I'm going to do public void run and so now that error goes away and in this run I'm going to call well actually let's make a couple more methods first Let's do uh, public uh, void set wheels. So in the old videos, I, I did a, a quick um, set and get that were uh, just auto-generated. All right, and in this case, I'm not doing that, so these are going to take in int wh and int wi just for wheels and windows so we'll do if you you know what I'm going to do this just to make it a bit better for you guys this dot wheels equals wheels and this dot windows equals windows okay so that might make things a little easier and then public int get 
windows return this dot windows and then do the same with wheels so let me talk through what I just did right here before we move on um, wheels return this dot wheels okay so Right here, I've, I've created two setters and two getters because I've created private variables here, meaning these can't be set by anything outside of this class, which is great. Um, so I've created a, a public car that's going to run whatever is in this runnable. So what I'm going to do here is rather than take in variables here, what I'm going to do is have int wheels just get created and this is going to do a quick import java.util.scanner um, and then we're going to come into the class here and type scanner input equals new scanner Oop, if I could type it System dot in, and so what we're going to do is inside of these methods, we're going to do a system dot out dot println, and say choose the amount of wheels on your car, and then we'll do wheels equals input dot next int and then same thing for windows uh, windows by the way this completely and totally defeats the purpose of having these variables being private I am well aware of that. Or well, it does and it doesn't. I, I mean, it still protects them, but you're specifying at this point, so it kind of goes against it. So, oops. all right. So now what I'm going to do is when this gets called, so when we create a car, the car calls run immediately, right? So that's going to look to this method, which I'm going to make call set wheels and set windows and ah uh, yeah I can't take in well that's fine and yeah that makes total sense that I can't specify uh, a thing there Sorry, coding quickly. Um, I guess I'll add equals zero on these just because initializing things makes me happy. And that should be set windows with an uppercase. Okay, so at this point what I've done is I've created a, a few things. So first we import scanner, we create some private uh, variables. We initialize scanner uh, to to the name input. We create a uh, runnable object and on our default constructor we use the run uh, the run method which is down below. We created two setters and all those setters do is take in our uh, our sort of information there. We have two getters um, and that's that's okay. Actually, you know what? Let's do um, let's do this a little differently, and we're going to just change this to uh, output numbers. And so return. Uh, so instead of a return, we'll just do system dot out dot println, and we'll do this dot we um. Ooh, actually, I don't know if I can do that. Yeah, I think I can this dot wheels and this dot windows pretty sure I can do this alright 
int. So uh, this is no longer an int, it's a void. Okay, so I think that this will become a lot more clear once I actually give it a run. So I'll call car my car e my car equals new car. So when I do that, let's just give it a run and see what happens. So immediately with just this one line of code, it's asking me how many wheels are on my car. So I'll say four and there's two windows. And then that's the end of the program because it hit run, it did what's in run. So now let's kind of do like this and say um, there are plus plus wheels on your car. It's kind of a weird spot for capital letter, isn't it? All right, and so we'll kind of do the same thing again. Okay, so at this point we'll simply call output numbers. So when we create a car object, it's going to just run this one line of code. It's going to run our default constructor, which implements our run method. Our run method will then call these three, uh, these three uh, methods in here that will output our, our numbers. They'll handle setting our values for us and they'll sort of do everything we need. So we do this again, we'll say four cars, two windows. And so it kind of took care of all that for us when we implemented it. Now this will make a lot more sense when we're making more than one variable or more than one uh, object of the same type. So there will be a time that comes when we're making 10, 15, 20 objects of the same type and they all need these same parameters put into them um, or loaded into them and so having this val uh, this this runnable system works out very well so with that being said I'm going to cut this one a little short uh, we're going to go into multi-threading next lesson why not fuck it alright thanks for tuning in guys my name is Damien and I will talk to you all very soon because I'm just doing these lessons back to back have a good one bye bye